Good afternoon. I am so pleased to be joined this afternoon by George Bott, who is a commissioner from Manitoba Northwestern Ontario Conference. And one of the topics that is being discussed quite extensively throughout this General Council is rural and small town ministries. So George is here to talk with us about that today. So welcome, George. Thank you very much. I'm glad to, to be here and have a chance to chat. Thank you. So George, can you start us off by telling us a bit about where you're from and why this topic of rural and small town ministries is important to you? Sure. I live in a little town on the north shore of Lake Superior, where the northernmost tip of Lake Superior called Marathon. Mm -hmm. We live in an area that ranges roughly from Thunder Bay on the west to Sault Ste. Marie on the east mm -hmm. that has no paid accountable ministry in any of the communities in that region within the United Church of Canada. Mm -hmm. and that if you think of it as a large circle, it's about a, um, an 800 kilometer diameter circle. And there just is no ministry personnel in there any longer. Mm. So we're involved in a number of projects that for us is really exciting about how do we be a faith, uh, a faith community, in, uh, continue to be faith communities in all of those little towns when there's no paid accountable mm. ministry and how do we communicate with one another to make that happen. And so we've got a number of projects that we're really excited about. So in a moment, I want to hear about some of those projects. But first, I want you to talk, I'm wondering if you could talk a bit more about, in addition to no paid accountable ministry staff in this huge geographic region, what are some of the issue, other issues that are facing uh, rural and small town ministries? Well, probably the biggest one is the sheer distances we're talking mm -hmm. about. Um, it's always distance has always been a real issue with us, any rate. Yeah. And the cost of fuel uh, to travel back and forth that's becoming another big problem. I think uh, when we left home, uh, gas was a dollar forty nine a liter, somewhere around dollar fifty a liter. And of course, that fluctuates. It's been up as high as a dollar sixty. Mm. We can't afford to travel in the same way that we did to help one another. We have to find other ways, and we think technology can help us do that. Mm. So in a time where we're talking a lot at this meeting about a transforming church, yes. changing times, changing culture, changing context, oh, yeah. um, you have a number of ways that you're helping rural and small town ministries to transform, yes. to be open to new ways of being church. So yes. what are some of those projects? Well, uh, the first one is that we have a cluster of churches. We happen to exist at the at the. Uh, the meeting place of three conference boundaries, okay. London Conference, Manitou Conference, and Manitoba Northwestern mm. Ontario Conference. Churches in that general vicinity have come to us and said, we're without ministry personnel now. What can you do to help us out mm. while we're searching? Or if they weren't searching, what can you do to help us out? We can do some of this ourselves but we need help. Mm -hmm. So that was the beginnings of that. And so what we did was, because we had, at that time, David Giuliano, who was the only paid accountable minister, yeah. and four licensed lay worship leaders, we ended up going out once a week to every one of those communities mm -hmm. in our cluster to lead worship. Mm -hmm. And so once a month, someone would be in their church from our, our community. Plus, we were doing worship services in Marathon when David wasn't available. Right. Now, it's just four licensed lay worship leaders, and we're maintaining that connection. Mm -hmm. It's happened that we built really strong relationships with those communities. So when Joy and I go into those communities to lead worship, we're going to our home congregation. Mm -hmm. So we have four home congregations now. It's awesome. That sounds it's awesome. Really, oh, it's really <laughs> exciting. Because after church, we get together over potluck. We find out who's had a baby lately, who's getting married, who unfortunately is no longer with us. We share all of the community things that we do in our home congregation in Marathon, but we share that now in mm. four other congregations. It's amazing. So part of the Remit 1 that was enacted uh, two days ago now included this conversation around clustering. Yes. And so you're really offering a model already of doing that yes. and the opportunities that might be there for clustering in a new church structure. Yes, and, and we're trying to extend that to, a, to an even greater degree. So mm -hmm. we're still planning on going the road and being in contact and in relationship with all those communities. But we're now saying, so what can we do that's beyond that mm -hmm 
to help you out, to make this an easier process to continue to be a faith community. Um, and, and we know they're getting tired as well. Mm -hmm. So we've got another project underway. And so we've, okay. developed, um, we've developed what we call the Cluster Worship Dropbox. Hmm. It's a, it, the Dropbox is the vehicle by which we share church services. So right now, um, uh, part of the project is by Thursday of each week, we have a full church service available. Hmm. They can go into the Dropbox and take all or parts, whatever they want to use, and use that for their Sunday worship service. We encourage them to make it their own, read the material, change it, manipulate it, massage it, make it your worship service, not our worship service. But in that Dropbox, there's a worship leader's bulletin. There's a PowerPoint presentation to go with all of the elements in that bulletin. There is a typed sermon from a United Church theology perspective, and there is a video of that same sermon. And we follow the common lectionary so that all of the churches are in that same um, same place in the church year. Mm. Uh, so that's another way that we've tried to provide a resource for them to continue to be the church. And we're still going to their communities mm -hmm. once a month to lead worship as well and be in relationship. Fantastic. So you're providing the resourcing and you're also providing opportunities for training. Yes, actually we are. We are we're part of... Um, uh, Joy and David, Misha or David uh, <laughs> Giuliano and, and I uh, were the instigators of putting together a committee to develop uh, an online licensed lay worship leader training program so we can take students from right across Canada and train them according to the, the description of what's expected from uh, the general counsel documents. Mm -hmm. And so we hired uh, Reverend Dr. Christine Jarrett who has a background in adult education, who also has a, a background in online learning. Mm. And she's developed the curriculum for us. It is an amazing curriculum. Mm. And we're getting some in really incredible feedback on that um, from ordered ministry people who say, my goodness, we didn't get that kind of training when we were at theological school. Right. And so um, while there's always that temptation to sort of dummy things down because it might be a little too hard, we've said, no, we want to maintain the standard. The people who are coming out of the program are incredible. Mm -hmm. In fact, take a look at the most recent uh, two issues of Gathering magazine, and you'll find some of the prayers that are in there have been written by our students. That is just fantastic. It is indeed. Mm -hmm. It really is. Wonderful. And we have one other program project okay. that we're working on, and that is how do we now link our churches so we can do shared worship? Mm -hmm. So we're looking at using the internet and video technology to do joint worship services. Mm -hmm. uh, right now we're trying to do it on a shoestring budget, but we're trying to set it up so we can share a worship service with Manitouage mm -hmm. and we will each participate in the act of worshiping as two separate communities, 90 kilometers apart, but it will be a joint service. Mm -hmm. Such an exciting model for this new emerging time. Very exciting. Oh, yes. <laughs> I can just feel your excitement. I goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for taking the time to talk with us today, to share a bit about the realities around rural and small town ministry, and also to share hope through some of the ideas and projects, not just ideas, but implementation, ways that you are helping to encourage and equip rural and small town ministries across the United Church of Canada. So thank, thank you, George. Lauren. You know what, I'm so thrilled that you asked me because we, we want to get that message out, that there is hope. Mm. And that's part of the theme of our, our General Council 43, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Thanks so much. We'll see you later.